Welcome back, Tau Flater folks. Jeff and the OG out here on a very hot Central California day. It's 104 degrees here today, about 40 degrees Celsius. So it's uh, pretty miserable out here. A little breeze is keeping us from dying. Hey, today we're bringing you a little, uh, little surprise. G2 Research in Georgia has sent us the RIP 12 gauge round. This might be the very first time you've ever seen this come out. Newly released to the public, or will be soon. G2 Research uh, has, as you know, is pretty famous for some of their handgun rounds, some of their uh, fragmenting RIP handgun rounds. It does not stand for rest in peace. It actually stands for the radically invasive projectile. We're going to give these a try. Let's see how they do in the old weather bee, PA459. And what kind of side are you using? They always ask that. Oh, that's right. This is the Bushnell TR25. And I'm sure as soon as I announce it, the very next video, someone will ask me. Weather BPA PA 459 12 gauge pump action shotgun with a cylinder bore, right? Cylinder bore. No because choke. These rounds are designed to be uh, shot out of cylinder bore only, please, not anything choked. So uh, be very careful. Break action, for example. Break cheap, action. Cheap one. Even though you can get, yeah, you can get $600 break actions. But. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's give them a try and see how they do. Okay, let's go before I pass out from the heat. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, we got ballistic gel. R.I.P. Okay, I'm ready. Alright, here we go. Whew! Did something damage down there. Here we go. Okay, let's review the Kronos high-speed camera footage and oh man, look at that. It did not get a very clean centered hit on that shot. Let's zoom in and uh, see what happened there. Okay, we're about seven, eight, nine yards and it's starting to yaw a little bit. The point of impact is about an inch and a half from the point of aim. Bear in mind we are at the maximum effective range of 10 yards with this target. The optimist in me says, hey, at least we hit it, but I would have liked to see more accuracy. I can't tell if it, if it was upside that side up or what. And you just clipped it, yet it still caused it to expand and, and fragment. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So obviously it's entrance wound here, and look at that expansion in there. I mean, if you go back and look at some of those videos on the G2 Research RIP pistol rounds, they have this cone of destruction, and then usually the the base piece uh, flies a little bit deeper for penetration. But if you can kind of picture this being someone's chest, this is your vitals hidden right behind. And that's some pretty, pretty devastating impact. So we've got probably the wad down here. We've got obviously a blade hitting there, one of those little troke cars. Here's a perfect outline of one there. And remember this little uh, ballistic gel was sitting here, so after it flew out, it got some major spread. Yeah, and I think the I think the main, I think that is the plug or whatever. And something. The, and the slug, I mean, it gouged into that and. That's yeah. right, isn't it? That's new hole in my wife's garage sale table. Oh, and they get a little mouse hole right there. Yeah. It's always good to have a mouse hole. <laughs> Okay, clay block. Oh. oh. Well, so much for the plastic. <laughs> this was the face, and it just opened this thing up and blew it to pieces. Thing is, I, I don't know where where it came out. It could have, I guess, it could have deviated so much that it missed our board. Yeah, because we were not able to locate any new holes on that witness board. So Ho Hopefully we can see something on high speed where it went. But I don't think it hit the board. So if, or... you're, if you're thinking about making a ballistic vest out of clay, you might <laughs> want to uh, look into something different. Now I was curious if the angled ribs on the slug would actually cause rotation. Uh, we actually did see rotation in this shot. From the time it entered the frame until it impacted, the slug rotated about 90 degrees, which is about the same rotation that we saw with the rifled Foster slugs. Since the slug is still trailing at a supersonic speed at that distance, the plastic plug is still kind of riding in that low pressure supersonic wake, so it never releases from the slug. Here we go, blue dot, and fire. Woo! Blue dot and fire. Woo. Fire. That is five gallons of water in a polycarbonate carboy. Here comes a slug and whammo. 
Okay, we'll slow it down and zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's a little, getting a little grainy there, but still the explosion is just tremendous. It's like a hand grenade going off there in there. Each pedal weighing about the same as a 22 bullet. The base weighs about as much as an AK-47 bullet. I saw at least one pedal shoot out to the right. Here comes the base piece. It made it out somehow. These slugs require hydrostatic force to open the pedals up and break them apart. So that's why we're using all these fluid targets. And yeah, even clay acts like a fluid. We're going to take another shot at another gel block and see if we can get a more solid hit this time. Hey. More centered one. Something zooming off in a distance. Yeah. Unfortunately, I forgot to arm the high-speed camera, but stuff like that just happens. So let's continue on. So, uh, yeah, it looks like we either hit it high or low. I'm betting it was high. Entered here again. It, it makes a pretty cool little picture for you, though. Yeah, you wouldn't have been able, if it was in the center. That's only, that's only, you got to look at things optimistically like I do. <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to see all that if it was in the center. Yeah, like Bob Ross, these are happy little accidents. So it made a pretty de decent uh, entry wound for what it did. And then you can see the main projectile flying through here again. Or that could have been one of the teeth or whatever, yeah, you know, but could have been. I don't know if there's, is there, it's, ah, it's damn it. It's pretty consistent with I need that. To stay on this side of the camera. It's pretty consistent with that long uh, slug that's in the, ba the base of that. Yeah. And here's what's kind of cool. Over here we have a mushroom shaped wad. That is almost an exact profile of the wad flying through. We've also got uh, what is probably the big brass base piece. And then this is what's cool. One, two, three, four, five of those little trocars breaking off exactly as they were designed to do. Just a little bit. Despite out. not even hitting it at center. So yep. that's, I, I, I like that. That's good. One of them hit and made a little uh, slice mark. The other ones look like they went all the way through. Yeah. Oh, oh first try. I'll be damned. Next, we will make some oaky ballistic gel using Greg's old gun magazines. It starts out at three inches thick. But after soaking it in water for 24 hours, it grows to four and a half to five inches thick. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Of all the shots uh, Greg took with the RIP slugs, this was the most accurate. He scored a nice clean headshot there. Slug was doing really well up to about nine and a half yards there and then it started yawing again. So they're definitely not BSing you about the maximum range of 10 yards. Hey, what do you got? Well, we were aiming for, I would put the red dot on the uh, Haji's forehead right there and it looks like it went right where we were aiming. Made a really deep hole. OG's finger can't even... It didn't go through, did it? Or did it? Not. it? Nothing, nothing came out the through. back. So we had this panel up here to show any exit, and of course nothing came out here and struck the witness board. So let's... Uh, yeah, we'll cut it open and see uh, if it fragmented or not. Yes, it? oaky ballistic gelatin. Uh-oh, right in the baby. Oh, not the baby. <laughs> we got the baby. <laughs> Old lady. <laughs> I see some pedals down in here, or trocars. I think trocars Latin for badass. I think it's a surgical instrument. Oh. Okay, so that's that's a look good that. sign that. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Oh. And look at this thing. Oh. So that is the. Uh, that's the the, the little uh, plug or that custom made wadding thing. And as we dig a little deeper here, this is pretty cool. Look at that sitting right okay, there. Okay, let me zoom in on that. Ah, there's that spiral machine piece. Well, that thing is yeah, it's it's pretty clear. These are not these are made to prevent over penetration. You know, that's I think that's the making it a, a good defense round because you don't want it to over penetrate your target. Yeah. This thing's as beautiful as a piece of jewelry. Happy anniversary, Mrs. OG. <laughs> Dang, look at that. Let's keep on digging, and yeah, there should be two more little pedals. petals somewhere. They might be back. Yeah, that's. We haven't penetrated through here. So that went so. probably four inches of that tough uh, material. There's one. Did you see one? Yeah, I think. Let me see if I can come at it from this side. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to be able to recover stuff too, you know? Yeah. Look at that. And these things broke off exactly as designed. 
They were designed with a weak point so that they will and, actually and, fragment. And if it had hit sideways or backwards, it, they, those obviously wouldn't have broken off. So right. we'll have to see what the, about all so, five teeth. Here's here's your, uh, your base piece and all five of those little petals. Five petals and a base piece. That's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Is the name of your new band? The base piece? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of a jazz, sort of a spyro gyro um, a tribute band. I love the, the magazines, but it's like they're like good for one shot, you know? Yeah. And our purpose out here today is to see if the RIP round is better or worse than a standard old uh, military double lot buck, nine pellet double lot buck here. Is it, who's that on the cover? Is that, a, is that Hickok? It looks like Captain Kangaroo, but it's Leroy, <laughs> Leroy Thompson. Okay. Captain Kangaroo. Right in the face. <laughs> Noticeably different recoil. <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> I am never prepared for what might come out of Greg. Uh, here comes the buckshot and really good spread there. Not too wide, not too narrow. And again, this was 10 yards. So let's have a look at it. the damage. So we hit Captain Kangaroo right in the front here. A nine pellet buckshot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And number nine over there in a nice clean hole on our witness board, which passed all the way through. So be aware if you're gonna use these for home protection. Um, but the stack of magazines, wet magazines, stopped all of those other eight projectiles. That's all there. you need for uh Body armor, I guess, is a sure. where this would make great 20 body pounds armor. of wet magazines oh. dripping on your crotch. This one thing right here is about 10 pounds, and I would need about four of them to wear as body armor, <laughs> so no problem. <laughs> but, like, you guys to pay attention to this. Uh, about 10 yards away is where we're shooting. It, it is exactly 10 yards, in fact. Yeah. You, we measured it, lased, lased it out. And double-lot buck at 10 yards already has a pretty good spread, about as big as OG's uh, oversized hand there. <laughs> Let's see where those landed Look up. Look at the one that slid down the side here. Yeah. Now, if you would have shot those through full a full choke, you'd have like a, maybe like a three inch group. Sure. I mean, it really tightens it up. Or that federal flight control. That flight control, it probably wouldn't, it, you'd have like a, it probably wouldn't even hardly had opened up yeah. at that point. By the way, go back and look at the Talflater mouse flight control. Buckshot yeah, ammo. it's pretty good. I mean, uh, revisit it. It's kind of fun to go look back on it. Yeah. Look at these things coming through here. Let's see what, if we can find them. I think that was nothing fancy there. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's keep turning the page then. No, we don't hate nothing fancy either. I don't even, I've never talked to nothing fancy, but I've talked to Matt and. Yeah. We don't hate anybody I, here at TF. I've even had conversations with Hickok. The only people we hate are Isis and Justin Beaver. <laughs> so we're starting to come across them. I think it, I don't think it went as far. It definitely didn't go as far. We, we're only about halfway through. Yeah, yeah, these have not penetrated quite as far. Pretty as consistent that. depth, though. That RRP round also kept most of its mass together until it was about three fourths of the way through. Yeah. This this started this obviously these came apart on their way down to the target. Okay, that's good enough. And they they flattened out because they're made out of lead. Taste them and see. I, they kind of look like Skittles. <laughs> All right, zombie green wax slug full of uh, bird shot. Right in. Here we go. 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 Woo! Wax on, wax off. A wax slug is a homemade frangible round. It has very funky aerodynamics, but remarkably, it's still pretty accurate. They have low recoil, but a lot of energy dump. So as we've seen with uh, just about every time you shoot a wax slug into any medium, they have crazy devastation destruction here. There is a hole in here that is, again, deeper than my finger. It goes way down in there. I don't know if you can see that in the... Uh, in the it's zip. hard to see, but you might be able to see it. Well, let's just open this... Uh, Book of Destruction. Look at that hole still making it through there. Yeah, it didn't start breaking apart until, you know, it's went in quite, I, I thought it would be a more shallow injury. Starting to come apart right here because it's getting wider. I could see some shot in there. Yep, <coughs> shot coming up. 
hole's much bigger. Here's where we start seeing a big giant cavity full of wet mush and bird shot. So that is a good sign. That's what you want your bad guy to look like, wet yeah. mush and bird shot. I'm telling you, a lot of people are like, what's wow. the best home defense round? It's like, believe it or not, a stupid wax slug yeah. might be on your list, you know? If you don't mind a little DIY, putting together a wax slug is really devastating. And it is 25 cents, you know? <laughs> That's the crazy part. <laughs> and Low recoil. Here's where we start slowing down and catching it in the... Uh, and then... It, uh, did it almost go all the way through, or, or is that? Oh, it, it went about halfway through, yeah, it maybe. Yeah, went about halfway through. Okay, so that's that doesn't surprise me that we didn't get real deep penetration on that. American. I could reuse those magazines over too. Like those, yeah. Okay, the old Winchester Super X one ounce slug, commonly found at Walmart and wherever milk is sold. Uh, great for taking down a deer at about 75 yards. Also, a very impressive home defense round. So. Uh, very common and rather cheap. These run about, what, a dollar a piece? Yeah. So let's give it a try and see how it compares with those other ones. All right, here we go. Oh. Good recoil. A lot more recoil, huh? Yeah. Here we go. Oh. This is a really good example of why wet magazines work so well. This is only four and a half inches thick, but it's equivalent to about two FBI gel blocks. This is the only projectile that made it all the way through, but it just barely made it all the way through. It bounced off our white backstop, and there it is right there, all flattened out. Accurate as we, uh, as we thought, and then here's the first thing we noticed when we came up. All this uh, destruction on the back here, and a big giant gaping exit wound here, so not good for body armor. <laughs> Plus it's 15 pounds. So we found these little marks here on the witness board from the wad and something else that hit. And then all of a sudden, about three feet in front of the table, we found a little piece of uh, lead slug. And it appears that this thing probably went through and probably hit sideways with very little energy, ding, and flew back out. So pretty impressive damage. And it kind of turned into a donut. So. Inner's about uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. And exits in a big giant gaping hole. Yeah, I thought it would it would definitely have enough energy to keep on going through that board though. Yeah. So less over penetration than I expected, but still some. Yeah. Hey, as I'm cleaning off my shirt here, <laughs> a quick shout out to my guy Omar down at CGG Guns and Tulare. He gave Doug a shirt. Doug's not with us today. Doug's sick. He's got a little sternum injury from one of those last videos. But uh, he gave OG and Doug a, a t-shirt and uh, that's that's to, cool, happy to you know. Them out here. Nothing, yeah, well, I like to support local gun yeah. gun uh, stores, you know. And nothing says fun in the sun like black T-shirt in 140 it's... degrees. Let's look at all the positives. All five shells lit off. They all they all shot. Since everyone is going to compare these slugs to the Oath Tango slugs, I invite you to check out Andrew's video showing all the just failures of those slugs. Now we did hit all five targets that we shot at at the slug's maximum effective range. All five slugs did fragment as advertised. The felt recoil was moderate, which is great for smaller shooters, right? The slugs were effective up to 10 yards and they had not only expansion, but fragmentation happening inside the targets. The depth of penetration was only bested by a one ounce foster slug that is not only heavier, but also faster than these slugs. The felt recoil was much heavier with a foster slug, and you also risk over penetration. Now I hear your eyes rolling and you hear the moans. Yeah, these things are expensive, but CNC machining of projectiles is very expensive. And they're probably making a lot less money per unit than you think. If you don't have a 12 gauge cylinder bore shotgun, well you're out of luck. It would have been nice if they would have made these a universal slug able to shoot out of any type of shotgun. And I don't know if they're going to be offering these in other calibers. I'm sure no one watching this was impressed with the accuracy of these slugs, but it's good enough to hit a human-sized target. It would have been nice if they would have stretched out the effective range a little bit. But remember, these are also a defensive slug used for home defense or whatever. 30 feet is probably adequate, 
and if you're shooting more than 30 feet, it may be deemed that it was it's no longer a self-defense situation. In my opinion, there was no attempt by the company to try to BS you into thinking these slugs do more than they actually do. And I really think our semi-scientific testing really backed up their claims here. Now I want to thank G2 Research for sending us these five slugs to test out. Uh, a lot of ammo companies just ignore us. It's odd, but we get more slugs from Russia than we do in the United States. <laughs> Rather than try to create a slug that works in any situation, works in any kind of shotgun, and tries to satisfy every type of shooter, G2 Research create a slug that has a very specific mission, and that is for close quarters self-defense. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.